Hi everyone, today I'm going to be talking about this Koi watercolor pocket field sketch box or travel kit because I've been taking it everywhere I go and having a lot of fun drawing from life and drawing on the go. So as you can see, this is sort of a traveling watercolor kit where if you assemble it, you can actually draw and have everything you need right there. And I find this so handy because I find myself traveling a little bit more than I used to because now that I live in Canada, my family is back in America. So it is nice to have this little kit to travel and take with me. It's also just fun to take it places like cafes or parks so that you can draw from real life. That's right, kids, you can leave your house and draw. So let's talk about this travel kit and then draw something in public. So this traveling kit has a few features that I really like. And of course, the first one is that it has a palette where you can mix multiple colors. And that's really handy when you're traveling because you can't, you can't carry a bunch of palettes and stuff with you. So having one that fits nicely in this little box is perfect. The next thing I love about this kit is the amount of colors. Now this is the 48 set and it does come in a variety like 12, 24, 36, and so on, which makes it a little easier to carry it with you because they are much smaller. I don't know about you, but I don't like to mix a lot of colors when I'm traveling, so having a lot of different colors already mixed and ready to go is very convenient, and also, it just looks pretty. Next, we have the very compact water brush. Now, I don't normally like water brushes at all, but having this one in a travel kit that compacts like this is very handy, especially because you don't want a cup of water while you're traveling, so having a brush that has water in it is very handy. All you do is unplug the base and screw the brush tip on, and you are ready to paint. It's as easy as that, and I like it. I do like it. Next we have the easel, which I normally like to keep my color chart on, but when I'm painting, I like to put my blank sheet of paper on there and color on it. I also like to keep pieces of tape under there, so I always have tape handy if I do need it. So it's easy to store things back there, but I also roll a piece on there, stick on my piece of paper, and I'm ready to paint. So it's really handy to have a surface to draw on because sometimes you don't really have a flat, hard surface to paint on, so having this little easel bit is really easy. Easel? Easy? Easy easel? Either way, it's been very handy, especially in places like painting on the bus or standing up where there's no sitting to draw. It's probably not something that you think about until you are stuck in a situation where you don't have a hard surface to draw on, so A+. Plus. Good job, easel. Good job. The next feature is very simple yet very useful is a sponge. It's simply there to wash off your brush, but when you don't have paper towels handy, it comes in handy. Handy? Handy. And the last feature is the ring on the bottom of the palette, which makes it easier to hold and draw with. That way it's not slipping about and you have a better grasp. It's a simple feature, but it's very important to not drop your watercolors all over the floor while you're drawing. So that is our Koi watercolor travel kit. It has a lot of features that make it easier to draw on the go. So where exactly did I go when I drew? Well, let's take a look at some sketches, shall we? So the first place I went was the aquarium and it was an unplanned trip as we were just in Vancouver and we went to the aquarium and I thought, hey, I have my travel watercolor kit with me so I'm going to draw me some fish. This isn't the first time I used the watercolor kit, I used it on the bus to Vancouver, but it was the first time that I had really, I guess, embraced drawing where I was. So it was really fun drawing fish from reference in real life and not just Googling the picture. So I really enjoyed that aquarium visit and honestly, I wish I'd spent more time there drawing. The second place I was was an airport and this isn't the most exciting place, but I thought it would be really fun to do a very quick sort of backgroundy thing. It's very crude, it's very quick, but it was a lot of fun, especially waiting at a boring airport. The next place I drew I was the most excited for, it was on an actual airplane. So it was really fun looking down above everything and drawing what I could see. And it's one of those things where everything is passing by so quickly. So the landscape changed, but it was still a lot of fun and quite challenging. Next up, we have a bus drawing. It was very, very shaky, but this is my favorite doodle that I did while I was out. I was on the bus traveling to Vancouver. There was an old man in front of me and I said, heck, why not? I'm going to draw this old man. Unfortunately, I was too shy to show him my drawing, but it was a lot of fun and I loved this doodle. Next up was an unexpected visit to the Vancouver Art Gallery. Takashi Murakami was there and I was very excited to see his art, but I was very tired, so I didn't want to stand up and do a study of his art and there was no benches on his floor, so I was very sad about that. So I just sat my butt down and just drew some background area. So this one's kind of boring, but eh, it's a doodle. The next doodle was done on the SkyTrain in Vancouver and I didn't really know what to draw on the SkyTrain so I just looked up, saw an old lady sitting there and thought, heck why not, I'll just doodle this old lady. So this is probably my least favorite, but once again, it's just a doodle. I'm just trying to, I don't know, stretch my drawing muscles. 
And the last doodle I have is on the ferry between Vancouver and Vancouver Island. You pass a lot of little islands when you're on the ferry, so I thought it would be really fun to just doodle the mountainous, hilly little island things, and it was fun doing a, uh, a landscape thing. I don't do a lot of those, and it was fun, and I do like to do them, so yay, something to do on the ferry. Okay, so let's go out to a cafe and just doodle something. So this morning when I went out to doodle, I thought it would be nice to go out first thing in the morning to doodle at a cafe while I drink my coffee. It was a fun warm up, a nice walk to wake me up, and I simply felt more productive that day by leaving the house. It's very simple, but getting out there and moving and doing more than just sitting at your desk all day can really feel good, especially if you work from home. There's a few things that I especially like about leaving the house to draw. Number one, it gets me out. I don't leave my apartment and that's really sad. I basically wake up in the morning, go to my desk, work on drawings and videos. I rarely leave the house unless I'm like mailing something from my store, checking my PO box or going grocery shopping. So when I go out to a cafe to draw a bit, it, it just feels really good because I'm going out, I'm being productive in drawing, I'm socializing even just a little bit, even if it is just my barista and she's rude. It is nice to get out and pretend I'm part of the community in civilization, right? When I'm not cooped up in my room all day. So it's nice to just get out and I do enjoy it. It's almost like a field trip when you're working at home all day and then you go out, it's really exciting, you're actually going out and doing things, whoa! Something else I really like about going out and drawing is that you draw from real life. It's really fun and different from drawing from a reference picture. It moves so you don't always look at the same thing. It's fun to do it fast and maybe just do it from memory if they're gone. Seeing things with your own eyes is just, it's just, there's something different about it. And it's just something fun to look at someone walking down the street, have to draw them as fast as you can or draw them from memory or do gesture drawings rather than doing the same old thing, sitting at your desk drawing reference pictures. It's fun, it keeps you active, it mixes up your drawing habits a little bit. As you can see, I'm drawing much, much more sketchier than I normally do, and I think that's fun to like experiment with things, do things differently, not just do the same thing every day. Sometimes you'll even find maybe a new style if you do something different. So you can get inspiration for things you never thought you would by going out somewhere else. So the change in your environment can get you to draw different things. So again, looking at what I'm drawing right now, it's obviously inspired from a coffee shop because I'm in a coffee shop. I thought it would be really cute to draw these little ants interacting with different coffee shop items because I'm in a coffee shop and I wanted to and that was my inspiration at the very moment. I had no plans for what I was going to doodle when I came here. I came here to sip my coffee and stare out the window at the sidewalk at the people passing by. Surely something would come to me or I would see something inspirational. Maybe someone would wear like a weird outfit and I really wanted to draw it. But in the end, I decided to draw ants. They're fun and cute and maybe I'll make these into stickers on my red bubble, who knows? So I like to go out and draw. I talked about this a bit in my Starbucks video, but I've been thinking about making it into a series, going out somewhere to draw from reference and talking about it in a video. Something Franard has been doing, if you don't know who Franard is, she's a YouTuber. She has really cute stuff, so I'll put all her links in the description. She has been going out to draw, but she'll focus on one thing to practice. So in her most recent drawing camp video, she focused on drawing old people. Who draws old people, right? Nobody draws old people. So I think it's a really good idea to go out there and draw something you don't normally draw, go to the park and draw kids, go to a cafe to draw middle-aged men working on their laptops, go to the zoo to draw animals, there are so many places to go to go out and draw something from life. So as usual, I have to ask, would you guys be interested in that being a video series? I'll probably do it no matter what you guys say, but I think it would be fun to go out once a month, go somewhere, draw a specific something and make a video and talk about it. It would be fun. So here's a poll. Why not? Anyways, I want you guys to go out and draw something from real life. If you're too shy from people watching, the only time anyone interacted with me was when I was on the bus. But this lady was really annoying and she was butting into everybody's conversation. So just remember, everyone else wants to avoid interaction as well and people will probably rarely talk to you. Before I go, I did want to say thank you to Sakura for sending me this travel watercolor kit. This is not a sponsored video, but they were so nice to send it to me. So thank you, I will be using it more in the future. All right, thanks for watching. Get out there, leave the house and do some drawing. Thank you so much to all of my patrons, including Michael Young, Jonathan Chihuahua, 
Zach Abstract, Lex CS, Shelby, Teresa, Megan, Lozo, Danielle Firecracker, Chris Side, and Mooney. If you want a shout out at the end of my videos, access to my sketchbook, coloring pages, and more, become my patron by clicking the link in the description. Thank you all so much for the support. Bye.